Somehow in this shed I need to fit another mower in here soon because obviously I have that Milwaukee battery powered mower that I need to start trying out and I don't know where that's going. Oh boy, everything that you build just quickly becomes too small over time as most of you know. But I'm looking for some fertilizer today. I am going to head out to our new place and put something down on a couple of those plots. And I also need to get, find my shade grass seed because I need to tell you about what's going on in that shade area and what my plan is for that. I have all my grass seed pretty much in totes except for I believe this one. Let's see what I've got. Gotta love the smell of grass seed in the morning. It's also a very typical March day in Iowa today, which means windy. You know where they said Oklahoma where the wind comes sweeping across the plains? Well, Iowa too. In other news, look how things are greening up over in probably the greenest section of the yard right now. This is typically where it gets the warmest heat coming off the house. It gets a lot of full sun all day, all, all the way into the afternoon over here. So I just was curious to see what the soil temp sitting at over here. Seeing that, you're starting to get into the window now of thinking about pre-emergent, and definitely I would start thinking about pre-emergent once you hit 50 for sure. The rest of the yard is not quite at 50, it's just this localized spot, but that's giving you an idea of how this is warming up compared to everything else, and that you need to start thinking about your pre-emergent if you're going to put that down. Now here, in the next couple days, it's actually going to get colder and rainy, so I anticipate these soil temps will come down, especially throughout the rest of the yard. This is just sort of a hot spot, but I wanted to give you the idea of look at some of those hot spots in your yard, see where those are at compared to everything else, and it wouldn't be too bad to get your pre-emergent down slightly early anyway, so I'll be thinking about that now. For me, I'm not planning to use any pre-emergence here on my lawn. I haven't done that for the last few years. Haven't seen any major issues with that, so I'm gonna continue that plan for now. But today I wanna to go see what are the pre-emergent options that I could use, something I could get at the store today. With some of that rain on the way, I wanna get something down on a couple of the test plots or some of the areas out at the property. I'm also seeing a nice green cast starting to show over the rest of the yard. It will not be long now before we get to the first mow. And the area that I did mow, Again, not the first mill because it's not the official video. That responded well though and it is greening up nicely. It took off a few of the brown tips. That's what the rest of the yard should look like shortly. Also, I want to show you, if you see a couple spots like this in your lawn that look greener than everything else, just in a circle, most likely that was from a dog. At least that's what it was from our yard. So you can see that a shot of fertilizer over the winter in these spots made it green up really quickly. Another thing I've been thinking about is a liquid application soon on the low cut turf. I've kind of lagged along in the past on uh, not getting fertilizer on there quick enough in the springtime and it hasn't had anything spoon feeding wise, that's my main program, it hasn't had anything since early October, somewhere around there. So that's a long time to let it wait with low amounts of fertilizer that I was putting on last season in incremental doses. So I'll explain all of that coming up this season and that won't be too long before the first application goes down on this low cut turf. Haven't driven the old 99 in a while, so probably time to get it back on the highway today. Give me the light, give me the light, give me the light. I'm tired of the darkness. As much as I'd love to continue with the total 80s lunch hour, I think it's time to check some fertilizer prices. Give me the light. I'm tired of the darkness. Good old 10, 10, 10. Oh, I can get so low and lost in the winter time. This is season, oh, just affecting my mind. Well, I made it out here, and as I told you before, it's plenty windy, so bear with me today. I'm gonna do my best to stay out of the wind in terms of the audio. I actually did find some prodiamine in Lowe's, which I don't remember being there before, but maybe I just missed it. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on some plots. I'm gonna explain which ones I'm going to use it on, which ones I'm not, and sort of the reasoning behind that as well. Because the wind is crazy, let's just try this. So let's do a refresher on the plots. So for those of you who don't know what's going on out here, I'll just quickly explain that. I did six different grass plots late last fall. These five 
are the ones that I currently sell in terms of bluegrasses, fescue, ryegrass. And then I did a mystery plot as well that I haven't told anybody what that is yet. I'm going to be planting at least one or two more plots this spring. I have a couple more ideas that I want to put out here and then we'll see what happens in the summer. I have another sort of massive plan for the summer that I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to handle this season, but I'm going to find that out soon. That is the six different grass plots that are right here. That's about 3,000 square feet total. Behind that, I have a larger section of turf type tall fescue. And then over here by the well, I have a section of perennial ryegrass. These larger plots are really just for me to experiment with. I have some more space, put something in the ground so that erosion wasn't happening, and also more stuff to mow, of course. So that's what's happening with those, but I've decided that I'm just going to do a pre-emergent on those larger plots, just half of them, and leave the other half without any pre-emergent. This is just going to be a test of this season. Not sure it's, if it's going to be a great idea out here considering this was farm field last year, but especially these plots right here like the Kentucky bluegrass are not ready whatsoever for an application of prodiamine or a pre-emergent. They're just not far enough along yet that I would feel comfortable putting that on there. So the root system, doesn't look ready to handle that. And to be honest, I'm not sure that these other areas are ready to handle that either, but that's really what I want to experiment with this season is to see if we put a pre-emergent on something that's very, very young. This was planted not only fall, but late fall, and then just see what happens with it. Now, typically I would tell you the best coverage you can get is a liquid pre-emergent, but some of you don't have sprayers. A lot of you like to spread things. So I decided to also test this with a granular product just because it was readily available. And as you've seen from the wind today, there's no way I'm doing any spraying. Also, if you watched any of my pre-emergent versus seeding type content from earlier this spring, you know that I talked about the importance of having a small prill size if you're going to apply a granular. This is important because as I mentioned, Liquid would be the best option. It's the best coverage to get a blanket over the soil. But if you're going to do a granular, you don't want huge pieces of that out there to try to give a blanket coverage over everything. As small a prill size as you can find is going to be a good idea to get better coverage. And that's called SGN. I talked about that earlier this year. That's size guide number, but the lower the number, the finer the material and the better coverage you're going to have. So this one that I found in the store, there was a couple bags that were broken open as this is very typical in stores when you find granulars. It looked fairly small, small enough that I feel comfortable giving this a try. And let's go see what the bag rate says and how to apply it. Okay, I know this is not necessarily the fun part, but this is the important part of looking at the label. Maximum annual rates down at the bottom. That is something that you will want to pay attention to for your grass type. Then also, this is very important as well. It says most effective weed control in turf grasses will be obtained when this product is activated by at least 0.5 inches of rainfall or irrigation prior to weed seed germination and within 14 days following application. So if you can't water this in, plan this around rainfall as much as possible. The other thing is it says this product may be applied in a single app or in sequential applications, just depending on how you wanna do it throughout the year. So typically I would do a split application, but we're going to see with this low rate on my perennial ryegrass, if I can actually spread such a low rate through the spreader. Looking at that rate, you'll see maximum applications more for warm season grasses are going to be higher. Throw in tall fescue to that as well at 5.05 pounds per thousand for the year. Then you have Kentucky bluegrass and perennial ryegrass at 3.37 pounds per thousand for maximum rate for the year. So that just happens to be this specific product, but these charts should be on any of the labels of the products that you're using or something similar. It's going to give you your maximum rates for the year. You need to follow that. Then also it should give you in a granular form, it should give you some sort of idea of what to set a spreader at for a certain setting. And this chart over here gives you different settings depending on what rate you want to use. Because I said I want to do a split application if possible, that means using a smaller amount now than a smaller amount probably around the beginning of June here. Soil temperatures are around 70 when they hit that. I would like to do my second application. But because this rate is sort of low for ryegrass already in terms of the maximum for the year, I'm gonna have to see if I can actually spread a lower amount. Otherwise, I may have to go with a higher amount now and not do a split application on that. So definitely not quite as fine as that other granular I have used in the past, but not bad. So this is a tall fescue section behind me. Remember that maximum rate for tall fescue is listed at five pounds per thousand. So if I wanted to do the maximum for the year and I wanted to do two applications in the spring, I could cut that in half and do two and a half. 
or I'm probably going to overseed this in the fall, which means I don't need to extend this out all the way until the end of the season. I just need this to get me through the main part of summer here where crabgrass is going to be coming up or other annual weeds in this section. So I'm probably gonna go with more like a two pound rate per thousand. I think the setting here said around a setting of four on a Scott spreader like this. So I'm gonna give that a shot. Here you'll see in a thin spot the coverage that I'm getting right through here. It's pretty good, pretty good and even. And that was at a setting of four. It spread pretty well at a setting of four. So you'll see I'm standing in the middle of this fescue plot right here. There's a pile of rocks that I'm kind of going off of as my marker of halfway through, but I'll just remember it's halfway through this other plot. That's exactly where I stop. So that side's gonna have the pre-emergent this year and the other side will not. With the way this was spreading at that setting, I kind of doubt whether I'm going to be able to spread it at such a low setting for the ryegrass, but I'll use this area right here that's just a path that doesn't have any turf on it right now to be able to see what that's looking like in terms of the coverage. I'll try it at a setting of like two or two and a half and see what the coverage looks like. So that is at a two and a half and you can see how far apart these prills are. You're not getting very good even coverage. So it's probably better off for me to do just a higher app with one application and make sure I get good coverage than it is to sort of halfway do it here and not have a good blanket across the ground. Remember that your yearly maximum for ryegrass with this product was 3.37 pounds per thousand. So looking at this chart, I think I'm going to go with around a setting of five on this spreader and just do half of this plot. Next thing I wanna do is get one quick application of this fertilizer down. 